because I don't know, man. That's that's the next question that gets asked: is um, is Dragon's Dogma two game of the year material? And I like the game. It's a good game. It has a lot of things that I enjoy. It also has a lot of jank. Um, and there are some things that I don't really enjoy, like how repetitive the forced travel gets and how um, um, the the combat, too, gets really repetitive. There's not enough variety in the monsters, like things of that, that nature um, creep up in the way. And that's something where the difference for me personally, in, and I think universally, was that when Baldur's Gate 3 came out, it was sort of universally accepted as game of the year. Yes, you had your handful of people who were like, I don't like turn-based combat. And you had a handful, handful of people who you know, had little things they wanted to nitpick about. But the reality is Baldur's Gate 3 launched. It had jank. It definitely had jank. There was frame rate issues and jank issues at the beginning, just like with Dragon's Dogma 2. All right. Larian Studios did an admirable job of patching shit as quickly and as often and as just massive patch notes. And they were just on it between all their studios around the world, just banging out the patches, improving performance, adding things in, doing quality of life features that the community asked for. I mean, they went above and beyond, I think, in terms of of continuing to push out updates. Um, whereas Capcom has sort of, eh, and pushed out one tiny little patch, which all it did was add a new save file functionality and some a frame rate thing. And they're like, well, we'll work on performance later. So it's just the difference to me when I talk game of the year. I'm just, I just, I look at stuff like that um, because yes, this this game is fun, but it has it has stuff that I I don't. There's a lot of stuff in here I don't like. And with Baldur's Gate three, there wasn't anything. I didn't like. I loved all of it. Yes, the jank was annoying. The bug cutscenes and stuff was annoying during the first week of the game's launch. But once they patched that out, I never had any issues after that. It was fine. Dragon's Dogma 2. Um, I mean, we're on the map right now. The one thing is like um, we're in the middle of nowhere right now up by Trevo Mine. There is no way. I mean, we're, we're a ways away from the capital. So we have to hoof it at this point. There's the only fast travel point would be from, I think, Harv, which were equally distant from Harv. So the only option here, because I'm early in the game and I'm in New Game Plus mode, but I don't have port stones or anything set up. So I can't teleport anywhere um, and I haven't been to the capital city yet. So I have to hoof it all the way here. Now, when you're doing it the very first time, that's cool. It's an adventure. But when it's your 10th time having to take this route because you've gone to the elven village and back and you've gone to this other place and back and you've gone and done this other quest and back that 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 30 minutes of of running gets really old um and i i did a video the other day about um when i went when i had that dragon fight that was super janky um that was out of here that was out of back Patal, and i think the dragon fight was up here at dragon's breath tower so that distance was represented by a little over two hours of streaming like i was streaming that whole session and it was like two hours of fighting like you could not run it was even level mobs and they would find you and i'm sure some players can find some ways to work around the jank but um or or, or work with the jank i should say to find a way to like cheese the encounters um because I've definitely seen some people doing some cheese stuff on YouTube to get past things. But the point is, if you do it legitimately, that's about a two-hour journey to get there if you're on level, you know. And to get there and have that fight be all messed up because of bugs and everything else, that was very frustrating. Um, but the thing of it is, is like, there's no way to get back after that unless you have port stones and stuff set up. And the fairy crystals. And again, that's cute, the first couple of times you do it, but after that it gets annoying. And when they touted our game doesn't need fast travel because it's not boring, I'm sorry, you were speaking for a, a very specific set of people when you made that statement because I'm not in that category. I do not find endless combat against the same mobs endlessly, like 
literally there is never a break in Dragon's Dogma 2 killing harpies, goblins, bandits. Uh, what's the other one I'm forgetting? It's all these like low-level mobs, and then thrown in there are cyclops, minotaurs, harpies. Did I already say harpies? Anyway, cyclops, minotaurs, and ogres. That's like the general run of the mill that you're going to find pretty much everywhere. And it gets boring after you've done that for countless dozens of hours. And they don't give you any way to alleviate that because they won't let you fast travel. It's like, oh, you can use an ox cart. Well, that gets attacked most of the time. Or you can use fairy crystals, but those are, are super limited resource. So it's not infinite. So you have to be very cautious about when using them. These are the little things that stack up when you're looking at Dragon's Dogma 2 compared to Baldur's Gate 3. Because what did Baldur's Gate 3 did? Larian went and made a game that took this rule set, simplified it down a little bit, but then made the game accessible to everyone and gave you lots of different ways to play and 17,000 endings and, well, 17,000 permutations, you know, and, and, and all the permutations. I don't remember. Was it 17,000? It was a big number. I, I seem to have that stuck in my head, but it's been six months. Um, Baldur's Gate 3 gave people so much variation and they were like, oh, do you want to change the appearance and class you can multi-class you can change the class you can go to the npc and completely start over from scratch and respec you can hire npcs you can do all this you can fast travel anywhere you've already been using the fast travel system you know you could go here do all this stuff lots of ways to do things you can explore here don't explore here go over here don't explore here the exploration factor is here by the way um in dragon's dogma 2 which you know i realize i've only been speaking about some of the negatives, but I, I can absolutely speak to the positives too, because Dragon's Dogma 2 captures the exploration part of the RPG very, very well. Um, the first time through, the first time you're exploring this map, um, I'm, I'm in the, it's in the middle of the night right now, which it's dark and it's dangerous right now. Um, let's, let's make our way to the capital. Like, let's just kind of meander our way there and see what kind of stuff we come into because this is this is something i do want to we say you know to move this boulder with our combined might. uh um, oh, dragon's dogma 2 does a good job of the that exploration component that rpgs need baldur's gate 3 does it better because as big as the map is as this map is the baldur's gate 3 map is just way way bigger but this because of the way this is the you know, you don't really get the top-down view here. You get this view right you here. Some now and use them when the need arises. Look at these guys helping me here. Um, it just looks really well. And like, if you turn off your lanterns, it's dark as pitch, master. Pray, light your lantern before I trip. Look how dark it is. Like, darkness is legitimate here. And this is something that Baldur's Gate 3 doesn't have. So, from an immersion standpoint. The creature's corpse will oh. serve as well. Are we gonna? Sure to oh, they're shooting the bunny rabbit to get materials. Um, the exploration component is very well done here. Um, the RPG mechanics are really deep, like the lantern and the light, you know, and the darkness. The pawn system works pretty well most of the time. There's occasionally some jank to it and some AI issues, but overall it works pretty well. But this is where I, I fall back and go, okay. Yes, they are fun as generic party members. What do we fight? Oh. My magic imbue your weapon with the fury of the elements. Yes, they are generic RPG companions, and they do have a little bit of bark. But there's no narrative experience to compared to, um, you know, Baldur's Gate 3. Um, this isn't a cinematic game like that. But look at the, the spell effects. I mean... Here, we're gonna, we'll, we'll blast him with this. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> so, I mean, this is a really good game. Um, there's a lot of fun stuff here. Now, the action combat is, for the most part, pretty good. It can occasionally. No sense letting the enemy gain the upper hand. Yeah, we just got whopped by goblins. Alright, that's one. We'll stick another one here. Stick another one over here, too. These are these electrical stakes, and they shoot. See how there's like a. on the ground? That electric 
force, man. I'm gonna fry him a little bit. Not compares to the thrill of victory. One cannot help but feel indomitable. We mustn't allow ourselves to become complacent. Take each trial as it comes. Oh, we got undead I now. I not to have to fight so soon, but at least I know I'm up to the challenge. I saw another one out here somewhere. Let's do that bim does once. Here we go. We're gonna blast him with this. Oh, he, he already took care of it. Are there any more? There he is. Here we go. That was thrilling. The hand clap. <laughs> I did not know I could feel so alive. Anyway, um, the um, the narrative isn't here like it is in Baldur's Gate 3. Um, and that's something that for me personally, and this is a personal Try thing, the, the narration, the narrative experience is, is what I need in RPGs. So when I look at the, you know, thousands of hours of cutscenes or whatever, whatever it was that Baldur's Gate 3 had, compared to the few lines of never-ending bark that the NPCs have in this game, the NPC companions that are with me, it just doesn't compare in terms of narrative storytelling. So that's another reason why I just think that as good as this game is, star. it's not going to be a Game of the Year Who's contender, because it doesn't have all of the things... When you look at the games that win Game of the Year, I would argue that most of the time, and I'm sure I, you know, I may be misremembering certain things here and there, but for the most part, the Game of the Year experiences that I've seen are the ones that have super gripping stories that draw you in and have some form of really impressive narrative on top of a rich and rewarding um, gameplay experience. The rich and rewarding gameplay experience it, in this game is here, but it's, it's marred by the jank. It's marred by the jank in the AI. It's marred by the performance issues because they don't have anything more than 30 frames per second. Quick commercial break, everyone, to celebrate and give thanks to all of these amazing people who keep me on the air full time. Really appreciate the support. All you got to do is join as a member. You get access to private videos. You can also do super thanks on any upload or super chats and stickers on any live stream or premiere you see. And beyond that, don't forget we're multi-streaming over on Twitch now, so you can support over there as well. Thanks so much to everybody. Let's get back to the video at hand. You know, and it's 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 marred by um, the fact that you couldn't start a new save file, which people wanted to have. Um, there was a lot of, like, it was more than just the jank when this game launched. There was a lot of, you know, issues. The tr microtransactions, it, that sort of like, those things weren't nearly as nefarious as people were claiming. Um, they're one-off items. Almost all of them, with the exception, I think there was one or two items you couldn't even get. Uh, you could only get through um, the store, but everything else was just part of like the deluxe pre-order editions. So, Baldur's Gate 3 sold a collector's edition, edition, and no one raised a peep about it. It wasn't, you know. So you can't you can't claim items. You know, you can't claim that the items that are in the deluxe edition are bad in one game, but not bad in the other, just because they're offered in a different way. That makes zero sense whatsoever to say that. So, um, you know, that part of the equation, you know just kind of furthered the tainting of Dragon's Dogma 2's launch and Capcom's reputation. So I just think there's there are too many negatives holding it back right now um, from, from it being able to be a Game of the Year contender. Um, or at least a, a, a winner. Um, I think it is a contender, you know, talking through all of that, you know. I think there's the potential to be a contender um, once they get all of the, the bugs ironed out and everything else and all the jank and everything else and get the frame rate fixed. Um, I played it on the PS5, didn't have any issues, definitely saw dips from time to time. I've put it into the forced 30 now that it's patched in, so I'm just that way it's just always at 30. Um, that way I don't have the dips. Um, so again, you know, the core experience is here, but it's lacking in the masterful storytelling element. It's a, it's, it, it has a narrative, yes it does have a story, um, but it's not, it's just not that cinematic narrative experience. There are a few cutscenes here and there, but for the most part, you're wandering around the landscape having lots of really fun combat encounters until you've been doing it for 20, 30 hours, and then you're like, uh, can we please do something else? Um, there are tons of great vocations to try. 
So if you start getting bored with one, you can try something else out. Um, there are quests to unlock some of them. You know, there's quite a few quests in this game. There's side quests and everything else, but nothing, nothing memorable. You know, it's like it's literally just fetch quests from start to finish, delivery quests, kill these. You know, go rescue this guy, escort this guy. Um, you know, which again, Baldur's Gate 3 did as well. Um, Starfield does it. You know, Cyberpunk, all those games do these, these things, but it's just how it's done. And that's where I think it could be a little lacking here. Now we're in the city. The city is impressive um, during the daytime. Let's go find a bench to sit in because there's one more thing I want to talk about because I'm, I'm rambling now. I'm 15 minutes in and I haven't wrapped up my point. Hang on. There's one over Tell here. Tell us, Vermin was once a beast when kingdom. Fascinating. Right? Indeed. Though it is not widely known among the common folk. I could swear I saw it over here. Oh, here it is. It's right here. Here's the bench. We're going to sit and pass the time until it's daytime just so you can see the uh, city in the day. Here we go. So this is another area where Dragon's Dogma 2 did an excellent job. The the city building... The world building is, is fairly good overall. The game looks really good. The weapon sets and armor sets you can get for your characters are really good. Like I said, the core of the RPG experience is all here. On top of a unique pawn system, um, it's a pretty unique overall, like, the height and weight system, the way it factors into your to your stats and everything else. Um, the different pieces of gear you can have that change everything. The fact that you can have your main pawn, the two pawns that you hire. You know, there's a lot really going on here, um, especially when you go in and look at, like, all the tutorials they give you. It's just, it's an impressive RPG. And I, I think, yes, it's a contender, but... I don't think it's game of the year. Um, and I know that some people are going to have a knee-jerk reaction to that and be like, you're so full of shit, you don't know what you're talking about. And maybe I'm proven wrong when it times when a time rolls around for, for awards season this year. I don't know yet. You know, We've still got lots of good games. We're still so early. This is end of March. Like, There's still, what, nine months left in the year. We've still got a ton of runway ahead of us and we have things like star wars outlaws and avowed and fable and indiana jones and stalker 2 and i could list another 50 games that are coming out this year that are going to be really good games and we just don't know which ones of, the, of those are going to be the ones that jump out like last year we had you know the alan wake and the phantom liberty and the boulders gate 3 and things of that nature um whereas this year you know there have been you know a couple of games that have popped off so far We'll see. I did have fun. I'm not saying it's a bad game. It's a good game. I would I would say it's borderline great game. For me personally, that's a subjective opinion because of all the things that, you know, and I haven't done my final review yet. Um, so the final review for Dragon's Dogma 2 is coming. Uh, if not on Sunday, it'll be out early next week. Um, probably early next week because I still have a few things I want to do. But um, I had a great time, you know. But yeah. Realistically speaking, I don't I don't think it's it's I don't think it's game of the year, but it's one of those ones that it's kind of like last year. You know, I really enjoyed Starfield, and I know for some people it was game of the year. It was not game of the year for me. Starfield was fun, but it had issues. It had bugs, and you know the the some of the Bethesda jank was there, and that that definitely detracted from that overall experience. Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty, on the other hand, was flawless. That was literally a flawless execution. I did a full playthrough again of Cyberpunk 2077 with Phantom Liberty, and I literally said, if this had been the game that launched, like, if this was the state of the game when it had launched with, you know, all this these new features and everything else, this would have won Game of the Year for me and not Baldur's Gate 3. That's how good the Cyberpunk... 20, uh, 2077 Phantom Liberty 2.0 experience was for me. It was so much better than the first. It was like, oh my god, this this is cinematic storytelling. This is adult storytelling. This is freaking amazing. But it didn't, you know, it was a it was a DLC, not you know the base game. So you know, so Baldur's Gate 3 was the one that won the one that won last year. Um, Witcher 3. Going back to look at Witcher 3 winning game of the year because it was a huge and super deep. RPG that was a narrative RPG with cinematic storytelling and a character that you could immerse yourself with and it had the narrative storytelling experience like it's in you know, Red Dead Redemption 2 I mean these are the types of games that you know I'm rambling 
I'm going to go off and do some streaming this morning, everybody. So if you want more rambling in your life about Dragon's Dogma 2 and other topics, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Daily streams here on Twitch. There's a link to all my Dragon's Dogma 2 stuff down below, along with a link to the Patreon and Discord, so hopefully we'll see you there. And more stuff coming in Dragon's Dogma 2 world, including my final review, so stay tuned.